Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? Yeah, today I'm still stuck on that blue, stealing that blue paint from Yankee Stadium. <clears throat> like I said, there were about 10, 11 of these five gallon buckets. <clears throat> and I had them all stuck up there in the D train tunnel. Like I said, the D train travels underground. I ran into the tunnel and I hid them in the exit. Now, <clears throat> it's funny, a lot of you guys have been mentioning um, RAL, R-A-L to me. And, yeah, me and him go way, way back. You know, I've known him since he was a little kid. He's known me since I was like a teenager, you know. We've we known each other a long, long time. And we hung out. And he's actually the person who came with me back up to the Bronx <clears throat> to get the rest of that blue paint out of that train tunnel. And we brought it down to the heliport, the spot that's known as the Punisher Wall, under the 59th Street Bridge. That's where we hit it because I ran out of the other blue, like I was saying, yo, I did that big RD, I, I love you, Deborah, 1988, blah, 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 1990, the year I did it. This is like I said before, this is when I wasn't even writing graffiti, you know? But that's what graffiti writers did. Like, you steal shit, you, you write graffiti, you know? It's like not buying it like and talking shit about it on the computer like the way you guys do it nowadays. It's a totally different game, as you can see. And anyway, getting back to Rao. Me and Rao and another person, Jute. Now, Justin is his name. He's actually on here, and I really don't speak to Justin anymore either, I gotta admit. Me and him kind of had a falling out, too. <clears throat> but I believe he's the person that's on here that commented on the last comment about Raul. And his, he said, yo, it's shorty, and this and that. And it's true. That was, Raul was riding a BMX bicycle. He had one of them fucking 25-gallon buckets. And he had someone on the back seat. And he'd ride a bike, and boom, he got hit by a fucking cab. And went flying and fucking landed on the bucket of paint, copped up. He was covered in blue. He looked like a fucking smurf. So we had to go all the way back downtown because the wall we're getting is under Gracie Mansion. I have videos of it. There's actually still to this day some blue there. And this is going back to 1990. And there's actually still to this day some of that fucking piece there. I'll show you this. But that blue actually winded up in the Freedom Tunnels on the west side. Going up those tracks on the west side. That shit winded up on the Hellgate Bridge. That blue winded up all down through the whole fucking highway here, the FDR, it winded up on the Harlem River, like, yo, that blue paint went to good fucking use, man, believe me, man, that I actually winded up robbing the, the place down there, um, under the bridge, the Punisher Wall again, they filled the room with beige paint, so I stole a bunch of that shit, like, I literally moved it maybe a hundred feet, I just took it out of that room and hid it somewhere else, like, you know, it was just always there, like, we could always just take it where we want. You know, it's like a big building, but we took it out the building, and we hid it like in the bushes and shit, like right near the building, like, and it's in the back. No one ever goes back there. They can't. You got to run across the highway to go back there. So, yeah, we just took it and moved it like less than half a block, you know, still on their property. You know, we just relocated it, I guess would be the word. But yeah, you see, that's graffiti. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, yeah. But yeah, so anyway, me and Ron... <clears throat> Did this big huge fucking it said RD and Rob right under the mayor's house. Now when you're standing there, when we were done with that shit, the, the tide had come up. I was up to water about here. Eh, maybe here. Yeah, about here. Definitely over my belly button. And John Horgan was maybe six feet tall. So him it was like probably up to the nipples of his chest. And we were still rolling that shit. It was oil-based paint. Yeah. We actually took the pan that we would put the paint in, and we wedged it between these rocks, because it's like big castle rocks. And we were able, and we'd get the paint off that. <laughs> we'd just do it and do it. Yeah, the fucking thing was huge, man. You could see that shit from Astoria Park. You could see that shit from Ward's Island, which is Randall's Island. Uh, you could see it from Roosevelt Island. You could see it from the Hellgate Bridge. If you're actually in a train traveling, like a Long Island Railroad or something like that, <laughs> yeah, you can actually see that shit. That's how big it was. It was huge. We did that shit real fucking big. And it's actually still some there. Like, no one ever crossed it out. I don't even think people knew it was how to get to it, you know? You know what's funny? You got Duster. The feed right back in the days with seen them. Duster UA. I see he takes a sailboat around. I talked to him. We're on good terms. We talked to each other and shit, you know? 
And I asked him next time he's around that part, if he could video it. You can see, I'm surprised no one ever did that spot, man. That's a fucking spot, you know. I don't know, but you gotta go huge. You can't do no little pussy shit there. Like, like I see you fucking pandemic motherfuckers doing, you know? Yeah, a little bullshit, man. Come on, man. We gotta do something huge. And so, yeah, me and John did that. John is Raul. Now, I gotta admit, <clears throat> hey, a lot of you guys talk, you know, about Raul. I know he was doing a lot of stuff out there. I'm not even talking about Graf. Hey, you guys know. I, mean, I lost touch with him when I got married. And then I was walking down the street when I actually had a child, like 20-something years later, and I saw him, but I recognized he was with the dude that I remember that went to jail. He did a good, a long time. He was in prison. I'm surprised. I was shocked that they fucking didn't kill his ass in fucking prison. This guy went away for some bad shit, you know, bad charges. I don't want to get into it. Just, uh, it's unspeakable, you know. And I see him out the corner of my eye, you know. So he waves at me. I'm like, you know, <clears throat> I kept it moving. <clears throat> and many years pass, and I bump into him again. <clears throat> and I say many years, like 10 years, you know. And I bump into him again and shit. <clears throat> I'm actually the um, Jute, Justin. Not Justin, D-W-C, a different Justin. This guy, a neighborhood kid. He wrote Jute, J-O-O-T. He's the person that was running around with a samurai sword chasing the police officers and shit, and they locked his ass up. That's him. It was all over the news. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, you know, I'm hanging out with him and shit. American Trash is the bar. The American Trash. That place, man, a lot of capers were cracked in that joint, man. That place, they don't even call it American Trash no more. That shit was under indictment and locked there. Like, yo, they killed that shit. They ripped that place apart, like drugs and all types of shit. I was reading about it, you know. But anyway, it was American Trash. So, I've been there. See John and shit. Go, hey, what's up, buddy? You know, it's kind of like Salty, you know, like you can tell he changed. Like, he, I've changed, you know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> I'm looking at him, you know, so <clears throat> we're hanging out and just saying, hey, it's good to see you, peace, I leave and shit, you know. <clears throat> then again, I believe it's my 50th birthday. I'm 53 years old now. It's my 50th birthday. Now, <clears throat> my boy fucking uh, Marino is there, man. Marino Frost. He actually played in the group, the Squires. Now, the Squires were actually the same band that Jimi Hendrix played with when he was in New York City, living in Harlem, hanging out in the Lower East Side. He played with the Squires. Now, this Marino Frost is part of the Squires. All right, so that's who the Squires are. Now, <clears throat> we're hanging out, <clears throat> having a good old time and shit, you know. And, um... It's my birthday. I'm hanging out with girls and stuff. You know, I'm partying. <clears throat> a couple of pictures are taken, you know. Well, me and John and uh, Maureen knows there. And this girl, uh, it's actually the girl that posted it on Instagram, right? So I said, oh, wow, that's cool. You know, I take it and I post it on my Instagram, right? So he comes up to me. He says, yo, what the fuck? What the fuck are you fucking like a Kardashian motherfucker? This, that, blah, blah, you know? <clears throat> We're outside, actually. You know? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, yo, you post some fucking pictures like this, man. He's like, you're gonna fucking put, you put, put my fucking face on the fucking internet? What are you out of your fucking mind? And I'm like, yo, dude, you're bugging, bro. What the fuck you think you are, John Gotti or some shit? He's like, yo, take that shit down, man. And I'm like, yo, man. I was like, dude, you got fucking. All right, I was wrong. I hit below the belt. I called him Federale. You get it? Because he writes raw. So I said, man, fuck out of here, you federal. He's like, yo, what the fuck you like? You know, he was ready to bust a cap in my ass. He said, like, what the fuck you call me, federal, motherfucker? So I said, yo, dude, man, don't come to me talking to me about being a fucking Kardashian, man. He's like, yo, I saw you walking with that bad charge a couple fucking years ago, man. And yo, I'm surprised. I don't even know how that fucking dude actually got out of prison without fucking getting murdered, man, with the shit that dude went to prison for. But you were sitting there all happy, happy. I don't know. So, but don't fucking come barking up my fucking tree about shit, you know, this, that. So I'm arguing with him. I'm walking down the fucking street, you know. All of a sudden, I notice, like, I'm in, like, a dead area. It's like dark out, you know what I mean? I mean, not down like a dead alley, but like there's no like street lights. And like I look around and he's just like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, yo, dude, like I caught that shit. You know? I'm like, you know, yo, man, fuck that. Yo, you said you walk around federally, blah, blah, blah. And I just looked up and I was like, 
<laughs> motherfucker. Like, yo, it ain't the fucking 80s, bro. You ain't getting away with no shit like that, B. You know, this, this, who the fuck this, that, bro? I'm like, nah, peace, B. I ain't ever talked to him again. And he passed away. That's the truth. Yeah, he was on some shit, man. It was bugging. I don't know. Something changed in him, man. People get different. You know me? I got more calm, kind, and loving. You know, him, he just got more hard-boiled as time went by. You know, you can't unboil a hard-boiled egg. You know, so, yeah. I don't know. But we had problems before. And the person I'm talking about that had the bad charges. I'm not going to lie. In between there, there was a situation where it is Sycamore Park. Sycamore Park is on 60th and 61st in New York Avenue. Now, in that park, they were hanging out, people playing... This person I talked about that went to prison for a long time, as a matter of fact, he went to prison around then. <laughs> like, that's how long he was in prison. And he actually, like, made it. Like, it's crazy. Like, the shit this dude did and got charged with and actually was able to, like, they didn't kill his ass. Like, they should, it was a big guy. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm sexually involved with a woman on the, the checker table boards. You know, they have the cement thing. You know, I'm fucking her. You know? <clears throat> a girlfriend of mine. You know, <clears throat> My pants are down, I'm playing with her breast and sucking on her shit. Now I was with my dog. So now, she's on the table. They're over there, you know, they're, uh, you know, uh, what do you call privacy? So uh, about, uh, there's one table in between us, like social distancing, you know. So, you know? <clears throat> so now my dog that I had, it's a pit bull, it started humping her leg, right? It got up on the table, <clears throat> started humping her leg. So now, I was like, yeah, hey, you're getting in on the action, you know, this, that, you know. So I think, all right, I beat the dog off. You know, when the dog's there, I'm doing my thing, I'm sucking on her tits. I start jerking the dog off. The dog comes in. Actually, the same person like, yo, that's fucking disgusting, yo. This is a fucking park, man. Fucking children are in here. What are you having your fucking mind this, man? So I'm like, oh, man, what the fuck? You come up here and you're interrupting my shit, man. It's fucking midnight, dude. It's fucking midnight. There ain't no fucking people in this fucking park. If there's a baby in this fucking park at fucking midnight, they're doing some dirt, man. So fuck you. Get the fuck out my face with that bullshit, you know? Oh, you think that that's... I put my fucking hands up any plate, you know? Said it was bad blood since then. You got me? Now, this guy did write a little bit, but God, fuck him. It's not even worth wasting a moment on the type of shit, man, with that dude. But anyway, so the, the, I did have problems with that guy. And the, 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 the John Rao also was always kind of rocky, but. When we were younger, man, we were out there. Me and John, we were doing shit, you know what I mean? He would put in a lot of shit, man. We did a lot of crazy shit, man. Hell yeah, man. Matter of fact, he died, yeah. He owed me $350 for God the fuck knows how long. He opened up a goddamn silk screening company to make t-shirts. The name of it was Praying Mantis. Ah, he got me for $350, you know. But yeah, he, he went down a path where it's like, I don't know, man. He never left the 80s, man, you know. Yeah, I mean, to shoot someone over words, there ain't no money in that shit, you know. I believe my heart and soul, yeah, he was going to pop it off, man. And like I said, I really was just like, dude, I'm out, man, you're bugging, you know. Like, it's just wild like that. I mean, it's a crazy night. I, I don't, like, um, you'll look at the pictures, you'll see. I uh, don't know. I don't have the pictures of John because I literally deleted them and threw them out. I don't have the picture with Raul in it. I deleted it and threw it out. But yeah, and that's funny because that also shows you how the people I hang out with look at shit. Like look at the internet and YouTube. Like they don't even watch this shit. I mean, I did explain that this one guy that's on here it has to be Jupe because that's the only person that went with me. It's the only person that's alive other than me that went. So that has to be him. And that's the other Justin that I was talking about. And he's the one who's on the bike with John and everything. Yeah. So that has to be him, and I, I don't get along with him either, to be true for you. Not anymore, I got no, ain't nothing bad, I ain't got nothing but love, I don't wish no harm upon the dude, I know you watch it and shit, but, you know, we talked about that shit, B. You there, I'm here, alright? You know, don't go fiddling around a bit much. I don't mind commenting, liking pictures and shit like that, but remember where we're at, man, that shit don't change, B. That shit don't change. And, um, now, yeah, so me and Raul, 
put in a lot of work. And uh, like I said, I, most of this shit I'm talking about is when I wasn't even writing a feed. And I'm still like out there, like harder than the people that were writing the feed. Now, if I'm going to be 100% honest, around 94, 95, 96, when I started kicking in with Justin about 96, Mayor Giuliani became the mayor. And that is why everyone ran away and left. Everyone. Cost was gone. Um, Easy was gone. J.A. left. And I'm going to tell you something about J.A., man. I threw everything at that fucking dude, man. Every fucking thing, including the kitchen sink. And he was fucking on, man. And that, that dude right there, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie. Like, yo, we were crossing each other out like fucking crazy. And I don't even believe I dented that dude's fucking armor. You know? I mean, that's the truth. Like, to be points with this, that, but... Honestly, like we threw it and everything, and you got to realize all these people I'm talking about that I hung out with, we actually went after J.A. and shit. Like half of them aren't even writers, like they don't even write, you know what I'm saying? And some of the crazy shit that these people concocted. J.A. knows my full name, he could have went to the police whenever the fuck he wanted and got me locked the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? But you see, that shit didn't even exist yet, you know? But I'm sad to say, like I'm getting there. We're in, like, J.A., you can never say nothing like that. Like, he played graffiti. Now, this is a reason why I put J.A., Cost, and Easy, <clears throat> right? This is the reason. I know you guys are asking me about 4 and 5, and I would have to, I, I could get into that in another episode. <clears throat> but with these three people that I'm talking about, all of them were actually king, like, of all the boroughs. You get me? Now, that's a big distinction a lot of people don't realize. What? is the term all city or all city king it's two different things i've went all city like i explained in my last video okay remember i was talking all that shit and i went okay well that's because yeah that's going all city but that's not going all city king when you're all city king that means that you literally king every borough you're up more than anybody in brooklyn you're up more than anybody in queens you're up more than anybody in the bronx you're up more than anybody in Staten Island. But I was the gatekeeper. Nobody, and I do mean nobody, and so far, as long as I've been posting these videos, you don't see anyone call me a liar. <laughs> because it's, yo, I'm not lying. Like, technology caught up with me. I had rats and shit like that. I got bagged. But you really look at it. No one could take Manhattan Island from me. Until the point when I didn't own Manhattan Island, and that was the three people. Easy, J.A., and Cost. Those three had Manhattan Island. Now, Easy can write wherever the fuck he wants. I never bother with the man, never cross him out or nothing. So can Cost. But J.A. couldn't. You get me? Like, I, he'd write, and I'd be like, oh, no, he didn't, and I'd be on it. You get me? So J.A. had that problem to deal with. You follow me? And it's like, he had the whole world coming down on him. Everybody would cross him out. Like that dude could go out and a week later, everything he did, it's either buff or someone got it. Like 20 different people would go over this shit. Like, oh, it was like that. But getting back to that picture, from that point forward, when I took that shit in Manhattan Island and started locking that shit up, no one ever could take it from me. No one ever, ever, ever. No one ever, ever, ever. I, actually, J.A. left. Giuliani came into office. And J.A. left. He went to California. Some shit like that. I don't mean to be blown to do, but we're going back to the Giuliani era, 30 years, 20 years or something. Cost stopped. Easy stopped. I kept going. As a matter of fact, Mayor Rudolph Giuliani actually hired people and pulled them out and formed a division to actually hunt after people. For graffiti, and within the first two weeks, they caught like 20 people that were writing graffiti, and that was just more of a challenge to me. Everyone else is like, Oh, shoot, you know, I ain't fucking with it, you know. And uh, we're gonna get into this on the next episode because it's just too much. Like, I really, it's just too much graffiti to really just blah, 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 right through it. You can't. I'm actually trying to. I'm, I'm like, it's just this point here, like I said, I was writing a lot of fucking graffiti. I'm going to put it this way. <clears throat> Everyone was gone. It was just me and Just. Then Scuff started getting me. And I'm not going to lie, man. That was probably my most worthy opponent, Scuff. That dude, he came at me hard, man. And he was a different animal. 
You know what I'm saying? Like Gen A, he'll cross your shit out, but if he sees you coming, he'll run away. You follow me? Scuff won't run away. He'll come at you. You get me? It's a whole different fucking... Yeah, I would say that was probably... On the streets, I would give it to Scuff. That dude, I underestimated him by far. I really did. Uh, the first time out the gate. And, uh, yeah, that dude there, uh, yeah, he put it in hard. And, and he was out there, too, man. You had people bashing him in the head with rocks and all types of crazy shit, man. You know, he wasn't, like, on that shit, man. He, he was... Put in a lot of fucking work, man. So I would actually have to put, you know, like five and four. Remember, I did one, two, three. I don't, I don't even want to go down four and five, but I would have to say fucking Mr. Uh, Mr. Fifty States, man. Yeah, definitely trap. If just in, like yeah, he did a lot. Like I, I could get into that, but I would definitely. A few people mentioned him, and I kind of wish you wouldn't, because I was going to go down that path later. You know, like. He's like easy. You really can't just talk about someone like Trap IF and just keep talking about and then just switch into a different conversation. Like that dude's put it in. Like he went all 50 fucking states. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I've got good friends with Fib's older brother, you know. And, you know, when they were doing a lot of that, I mean, he would actually be on the phone and talking. And I, I remember a lot of it and seeing it on the internet and shit like that. And just those huge, I love those big blockbusters he does, man. It's like a man after my heart, man. But yeah, he would have to fall around four, fifth, somewhere around there. Yeah, fifth, sixth, something like that. But Scuff is like right there, yo. He really is, man. Scuff really, really put a hurting on my shit. Like when it came to graffiti, like I had so much fucking graffiti out there. Me and Justin, and me and Skay, me and Seer, this, that. He didn't really fuck with the shit with me and Seer. But hit him and Foe, they actually started catching me and Skay pretty good. Yeah, <clears throat> they were fucking me up pretty good for a hot minute. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I give it to them definitely. As far as it goes with one of the hardest nuts to crack, yeah. But eventually they just faded out too. Like they just stopped. I don't know what happened, but maybe life, children, or whatever, you know, new job or something like that, you know. But yeah, they faded out after a while. But no, them dudes put it in hard, man. Every time, like I went at it with YKK and Scuff in particular, I don't mean fighting. I actually never physically fought the man. I don't even think I ever physically stood in front of the man. I don't even think I know him like that. I mean, I've seen pictures of him. But, yeah, we went at it a good three or four times, man. Yeah. yeah man. He always came at me hard, man. He, he, yeah, he ain't fuck around. I'll give it to him on that. Yeah, scuff. I would say he actually ragged me around more than J.A. Because J.A. left after 89, and I'm not going to lie to you. You could probably even ask him. I never, ever, ever went over one more thing of J.A.'s the minute I found out he didn't live around here no more. I'm dead serious because it's no comp. There's no competition. I knew he came back because I climbed up some crazy shit. I did something on that. Not the Brooklyn Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge. I don't know, Manhattan Bridge. One of them fucking bridges. I climbed up with Baron. Baron was drunk off his ass. Did a big RD. It's actually a chimney that comes out like this in the fucking middle of my D. But I proportioned it well. And I did it in color, too. It was all different way of colors and shit. You know, I filled that shit in like fucking FBA on the one train or something, you know. But it was just a blockbuster, square blockbuster. <clears throat> Had a Barry tag in it. Barron actually wrote that tag. Uh, Barron didn't do anything else, but he did that tag. <clears throat> and uh, I knew J.A. came back around because they crossed that shit out. I'm like, ah, fuck, man. man. They start this shit, man. I was like, I ain't going back up there, man. Fuck him, he got that shit, you know. But yeah... <clears throat> Yeah, I actually, like, I, that's one thing, man. Criminal me, yeah, you know, but when it comes to, like, not even graffiti and their rules, but, like, plain fair. Like, yo, there's no smoke, no fucking mirrors behind me, man. I, I, there was none of that shit at that point, man. It's just tightening up your sneakers and going, you know. That was the only way. Like, there was, now it's like someone like take a picture and this, that, and online, and before you know it, they're like the king of the world or something, you know. Yeah, no, that shit didn't exist back then, man. And I came, I fucking came after problems. Like I said, Giuliani formed some new task force singling out graffiti writers. What do I do? I make that the hardest fucking time I hit the city of my life. You know, just to be like, well, let's see what these fucking cops are all about, man. Fuck that shit. You know, it was, it was a test to me. It really was. Oh, and it separated the boys from the men. Think about it that way. All the little boys ran away and hid. The fucking men were like, oh, let's do this. Uh-huh. 
for real, for real. That's the truth. Uh, everyone was gone. It was gone. Only Scuff was giving me problems. Scuff and whoever the hell he was with, foe. I remember. I don't know who else, but yeah, everyone else. Like my side was rocking hard. I had a good couple of years, man. And then it all came to an end, man. It all came to an end. My phone rang. I'm living out in Staten Island. My girlfriend at the time, I guess you could call her that, sleeping next to me. Now 11 o'clock in the morning. My fucking house phone rings. There's no like cell phones and shit like that. My fucking house phone rings, yo. We're going to get into that next time. Hey, what's up, people? Yeah, I just want to remind you, look through the video that's coming after this. You'll see um, the part where I went behind Gracie Mansion. That's where the blue paint's still there. I did that video just yesterday. Right, and then after that, you'll see some of the stuff I'm talking about with my 50th birthday. Marino Frost is playing guitar. He's doing some wild songs and shit. I think Hey Joe, or, uh, or Israeli Gears, maybe a Cream song or something like that. I think I don't remember. <clears throat> but yeah, I put a couple little clips. I didn't play the whole songs, of course. But yeah, watch through the videos and you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see the spot that's facing out over the river, and you'll also. Uh, See, but I didn't get Raul because he told me, oh, delete the picture. But that's from the time he's accusing me of being um, a Kardashian. I said, what the fuck, you think you are a Kardashian or something? Blah, 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 blah. This and that. You know, I was just posting pictures. A girl actually sent me the pictures. It's my fucking birthday. That's what people do, right? They send pictures of their birthday and let people know they have a life. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, these people in this area here, yeah, they look at their shit totally different, you know. As I explained in the story, I believe. Yeah, so you gotta watch through them. You'll see the spot and you'll see some of the videos. You know, this man was 50. So three years ago. And John Horgan died. Raul, rest in peace, bro. Peace. Hey, what's up, people? You know, I just remembered all that shit that happened in American Trash. Before that, I was writing graffiti with Zimp that same night on the FDR drive. Mr. Bakerman videoed that shit. It's cool, man. If you can, if you guys know who Mr. Bakerman is, ask him you know, to let you peek at that shit. That's good footage, man. Yeah, the boy Zip almost gets hit by a fucking car. I got that boy climbing down some shit and going around the back with me. You know, very few people could keep up with me, but yeah, boy Zippy Zimp. That's my boy Zimp, the pimp. Yeah, then after that, I broke out from them and I went up there and hung out the rest of my birthday. Are you ready? some of the blue. This thing wrapped around the whole area here. It started there. You can see where it started. Some of the blue. That's that Yankee Stadium blue. Yeah. But it goes all the way. All the way. That's how big me and Raul. Me and Raul did this spot. around the bend. So yeah, we used a lot of that blue stuff. The Yankee Stadium blue. It was good stuff. Yeah, we used to hop down there. Those are the big blockbusters, like I said. People. I'm gonna go this way, I'll show you some more of the bears. See this is actually part of the gray wall right up here as well. See like the gray, you see the wall? It's the mayor's house. Yeah, after they buffed me, they put me on the news, they buffed me in Barrett, 
came out here and I tore that shit up properly. I did the whole fucking thing around the whole thing. That's when I used Andrew's dog. The dog was OJ. I think this is a beautiful part of the fucking city, huh? Fuck yeah. But yeah, you guys could climb down there with something. Do some huge fucking blockbusters. There's a lot of room there, y'all, for reals. Alright, Gracie, man. Shit. I'll go down on that one now. I used to have one here too, let me see. Zoom in on it. 